Okay, finally, we're getting close to the promised payoff. Um, we're, we're now getting a sense of the real power of these FISA bends. They really are just a very elegant ordinal collapsing function. So the idea is we're using, going to use higher FISA bends to create um, ordinals in various classes. And say the first time we do it, we're not going to be creating a super huge ordinal you know, omega n by on the scale of omega n. We're just, we're really going to start with just an epsilon naught style kind of thing, a, a tower of exponentials. But then we're going to use those to control recursion on a lower class and then a lower class and a lower class and a lower class till we reach omega 1. That's the countable ordinals, and we know that that's what we can use to control uh, phi sub naught. Okay? And remember, phi naught is exactly, phi naught of alpha x is just exactly f alpha of x. It's the same definition, just a new notation. So, for example, we're up to the point where we could take phi 2 of 3 omega 1. That's really just an epsilon, that's just a, a tower of omega 1s. It's epsilon sum omega 1 plus 1 um, with a very precise choice of fundamental sequences based on uh, successor and doubling and powers of 2 and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and then we're going to use that thing as the control argument in phi 1 applied to omega naught. Now remember, I've kind of skipped a bunch here. The biggest thing we actually looked at explicitly what here was little, little omega 1 plus 1. And even using just that put in as the control argument for phi 1 applied to omega naught, even that guy got us all the way up to gamma naught. And now we're putting in something that's lots, lots bigger than just omega 1 plus 1. It's a tower of omega 1 exponentiated. And it turns out, again, something I didn't prove for you, is that this thing is bachman Howard, uh, basically. And then we put that in, and of course we just put that into the f function. And I'm just going to put in a 3 because that's my traditional argument. So it's not so it's clearly not degenerate, although 2 would still be ridiculously huge. Okay, so that's good. We've got it back grounded to our favorite thing, the title of the video series, Ridiculously Huge Numbers. But why stop there? You can see where it's going to go. Okay, so let's let Ta sub n. Um, these are all going to be countable ordinals. They're created using higher ordinal classes, but they're all countable ordinals. Um, Ta sub, sub 0 is just going to be good old-fashioned 3. And it's not super important that we start with 3, but it's just it's a nice place to be with the it's 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 a it's not ridiculously complicated but it's um it gives us a nice starting point with like these towers of of, of exponentiations so ta naught is just the number three ta one is v one of three come omega naught oops too much ta two is first do that at the phi two level with argument omega one then plug that in as the control argument of phi one we've done that Okay, ta three. That's the next. That's the first thing that we haven't done explicitly yet. You do the the triple, the three power at the phi three level, on omega two. This is really that part of it right there, is just a tower of exponentiated omega twos with a particular choice of fundamental sequences. Now you use that as the control argument in phi two acting on omega one. So this is essentially. Um, a, a version of Bachman Howard in the applied to little omega one, which lives in the big omega two world. Okay. Um, and then you use that Bachman Howard level of complexity as the control argument to create a new infinite ordinal, a new countable ordinal using the V one function. And that's the first, that's the first time we've really gotten something that's bigger than anything we were doing with the style of OCS we were doing before. It can be replicated using the OCF language, a, a, a small extension of the OCF language that I was talking about before. But I, right now, I'm feeling this that this is more elegant because it's really just doing the fast-growing hierarchy on more complicated kinds of numbers, just numbers that happen to be infinite. Okay, and then of course we can just keep going. So toss of n is going to be start at the n, the omega n level use the simplest interesting argument that lives at that level which happens to be little omega n minus one create an exponential tower of those guys then use that as a control argument in a phi n minus one use that as a control argument of phi n minus two use that etc 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 eventually you get down to using that in the control argument in a phi two applied to 
one of our best friends, little omega one. And then finally, you use that as a control argument in little phi one applied to our best best friend, little omega zero, to create a countable ordinal. Okay. Um, now I've used subscripts here, but let's let's actually just change the definition, the notation slightly. Let's emphasize that hey, whenever I've got a sequence of tree ordinals, I can think of that as defining a fundamental sequence for some new guy ta. Okay. Um, and so that's the ta that I've been advertising for the last few videos. That's this immensely big countable ordinal. Technically, it's really a countable tree ordinal because we're we're using those fundamental sequences, um, and that's what's going to be create an enormously big number, bigger number than what we had before. Okay, um, and and here this is just a reminder that the very innermost part, what we start is just um, a a soup of a tower of exponents of one of these little omega gadgets, and you could it's very explicitly, um, if you only care pay attention to the ordinal height of that guy. It's just the next epsilon number after um, omega n minus one itself. So that's something that's actually a fairly standard ordinal construction. Okay. So we're starting with a fairly ordinary tower of exponentials of a an uncountable ordinal, something in the omega n class. We use that to control the creation of a much more intricate ordinal in one class lower, and then create that in much much more intricate ordinal in something omega n minus two, etc. And then we stop when we get a countable tree ordinal. Although actually, we don't quite stop because then we're gonna use that countable guy to create a number in just the ordinary way using F or equivalently uh, phi sub zero. And that's what I'll show you right here. Boom, okay. For any one of those taws, whatever level of complexity we'd like to stop at, that's a countable ordinal. We can plug that into the phi zero function which is just our name for the fast growing hierarchy with some natural argument, natural number argument X. And why not diagonalize one more time? And that means if we take the ta, which was the limit of all these finite ta n's, apply that to a natural number n. Finally, I get to use n for a natural number, which makes me feel better in terms of notation. By definition, always, we just diagonalize. That's phi naught of tau n of n. And so very, or a bit more explicitly, it's this gadget. We start out with this iterated exponential gadget. Then we make that, use it as a control argument, repeatedly, 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 repeatedly to create a countable ordinal. And um, that's unimaginably huge. And then we use that as the control in the fast growing hierarchy to create an honest to God, finite natural number. But oh my gosh, it's really, really, really big. And this in in a very elegant way, basically takes the ordinary ordinal collapsing function story um, rather further than we had before. Um, in, in what what I feel like is a very nice way. Um, okay, so I had, Advertise that not only, so you could just stop here and say, okay, <laughs> we have a perfectly well-defined uh, definition of a much huger number than we ever had before. Put in n equals three here, or uh, if you really like, add one to ta and put in n equals three, and it's just ridiculous. But part of what I wanted to show you, of course, was how does it relate to the slow-growing hierarchy? There was this claim that we should be able to create um, something where the slow-growing hierarchy actually catches up with the fast growing hierarchy, I have now defined the Taw sequence, which was one of the ingredients that we needed, but I need to create the collapsing operation C. Okay. Um, and in fact, this is a beautiful story as well. Remember how one of the neat things here is that the phi functions didn't really need any new ideas, really deep new ideas, besides the ones we were using the fast growing hierarchy. The fast growing hierarchy seemed to only apply with a control argument that was a countable ordinal and a, a, a main argument that was an integer, and yet essentially using almost exactly the same definition with just one extra not particularly important line, we got it to um, create an ordinal collapsing function to create amazingly big ordinals that can then be used in phi naught. 
Okay, and the same deal happens with collapse. Turns out there's a very general collapsing operation um, which takes a um, ordinals and makes uh, smaller ones out of them. Honest to God, smaller ordinals um, called, and he calls it big G. Um, and it turns out to really just be an extension of the slow growing hierarchy. And so really the slow growing hierarchy and the fast growing hierarchy, not only are we analyzing them using these new tools, they actually are the heart of the definition of the new tools. So it's pretty cool. Now, uh, I have to say though, if you want to def define G on the entire class of tree ordinals, G has a definition there, but it's uh, a little bit intricate and involves another sort of helper function um, that I still don't know how to motivate very well. Um, and right away in Wainer's article, Slow Growing, Growing Versus Fast Growing, he almost immediately starts cutting down the this entire fairly unwieldy class of all tree ordinals and looks at some subclasses where G actually has some nice properties that we actually want it to have, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm really just gonna tell you what big G does on the T ends, which is all we, we, ever, we ever use practically in this business anyway, okay? And it's essentially what he does in the article as well. It's the, the, the punchline of the article only applies to the T ends, the things that are created out of uh, little omegas and the fee functions. Okay, so uh, in the next video, yeah, let's let's save it for the next video. I will tell you what Big G does. It's really simple. <laughs> it's really really quite simple, um, and it's exactly designed to dovetail with what we're doing and do the right things with the Taws. Um, and then we're getting pretty close to the point where I can show you that we have a collapse operation. It does interact well with Taw. We do have we we can create this ordinal, and in fact we have created it. Taw which we, we just we just defined, is exactly going to be the right ordinal where G and F um, interleave with each other.